Hi, I'm Rob D from Property Hub with Rob B, and we're here to help you with something that's really important in property investment, but something a lot of investors are very scared of, negotiation. We've got a deal, right? Well, who knows? In this video, you're about to find out. So the first thing you need to understand when you negotiate is it's all about people. You're not negotiating with a rabbit. You're not negotiating with a robot. You're negotiating with another human. And humans like humans but sometimes humans don't like humans. Now, hopefully you're naturally likable anyway, but always try and present yourself in the best light. And that's not wearing a shirt and tie, that's just coming across as friendly and courteous. Basic stuff, but it goes a long way. If the person you're negotiating with likes you, the chances of getting a deal done dramatically improve. The next thing that you want to do before you even view properties is to do your homework and make sure that you're organized. If you've spoken to a broker, you've got your finances in order, you've got proof of funds for your deposit, that will put you in a far stronger negotiating position. Why? Because it removes any doubt that you might be a time waster or that the deal will fall apart further down the line. If you can present yourself as a serious, credible buyer to the agent and the vendor, it'll make your offers much more attractive. Now, if you can, you want to be negotiating with the vendor or the seller direct, but sometimes that's not possible, especially if an estate agent's involved. If you are not part of the negotiation, it doesn't mean that you can't influence it. Coach the estate agent. Of course, they are meant to be representing the vendor, but ultimately they want a deal to be done. So if you can explain your thinking around an offer and break your offer down, then hopefully they will use the same reasoning when presenting the offer to the vendor. So don't just say, my offer is £250,000 for this property. Explain why the offer is £250,000. Give them a breakdown of why you're coming in at that level. But if you are negotiating directly, then you want to make sure that you're planting seeds. So what we mean by this is if you're going to bring something up later on in a negotiation, your reasons for an offer lower than what they were expecting, then it shouldn't come as a shock to them. So while viewing the property, if the kitchen isn't in great condition, don't keep it in your head, don't hide it, let them know. Of course, be polite, but just point out that, oh wow, that kitchen needs more work than I was expecting. You've then planted a seed. What you've now done is plant a seed with the person you're negotiating with, so that when you come to negotiation at the end, it's not the first time they're hearing it. But remember, that is a more advanced negotiation technique, because if you get it wrong, you may cause more damage than good. But try it on a basic level first and see how you get on. The next thing that you must remember when it comes to negotiating about property or anything else is that it's about the money, but it's never just about the money. There's always other factors that are important in a deal and what those are will depend on the other person. The most typical ones are speed and certainty. Most of the time, sellers want to get deals done quickly. They're selling their property for a reason, either because they found one that they want to move into and they're scared of losing it if it takes too long to sell their own, or because they want the money out of that property for some reason and they want their money quickly. So if you can demonstrate your ability to act at speed, that could be a big factor. Certainty is also important. The absolute nightmare for any seller is getting a long way down the road with a deal and then having it fall over later. If you can show that even though you're not offering as much as another buyer, you're far more likely to actually complete the transaction, that can massively work in your favor. But there are lots of other factors as well. What matters to the other person in a deal? There are an endless number of factors that can matter to the other person in the deal as well as the money. Your job is to first of all, find out what they are, and then secondly, present your offer in a way that shows that, okay, you might not be making the highest offer, but you've got the best offer when you take all these other factors into account. A final tip, and a more advanced tip, is understand the person you're dealing with. Your chances of a successful negotiation can be increased with clever lines and tricks, but the most important thing you can do when you're in a negotiation is understand the person you're dealing with. Is this the type of person who would love the battle of a negotiation and will not take offense? Or is this person more likely to be put off by the whole process and would just prefer to get a deal done quickly? When you understand that, you understand that a standard template isn't going to work when you negotiate. You have to be empathetic to not just their situation, as we've described, but their personality. This will be the difference from you being a good negotiator to you being a great negotiator. So negotiation, it's an art, it's a skill worth learning, but if you do, you can make yourself or save yourself 
thousands. Definitely. And so can educating yourself. And a really easy way to do that is to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to get notified of new videos while you're at it.